Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming 25. And today we're going to actually look at functions part two. So last time we actually talked about functions, and now we're going to actually extend those concepts. And what we're going to do is take a few examples that we had uh, taken last time and actually uh, kind of make them a little bit better and uh, introduce some more advanced concepts. And so let's take a look at an example that we had looked at last time, and that was a simple calculator. And what we had done, we had created several functions, one for addition, and then there was one for subtraction, and then you had division and multiplication. And we're going to combine all those and show you how to do a multiple return. Now, the return method that we talked about earlier, let's take a look at return, only, ret in a sense, returns one thing, okay? But that thing can be an array. So using that array, you can actually return multiple values. And we're actually going to use this in the future in, in many different programs. And so what we're going to do is just take all those functions uh, that we had created earlier and combine them just into one function. So you're going to go ahead and just define one function. We'll call it my values. And then you'll put a variable one and a variable two. And then you're going to add them and subtract them and multiply them and divide them. All the same methods, but you're just going to pull it out and put it into one function. And then what we're going to do, we're going to create an array. And in that array, we're going to put the values of each one of those results and then transfer that all back in return by returning that array. And then we want to actually read those uh, particular results. We just basically tick through the array. Now, this is the secret of returning multiple values. And so uh, when you want to do more than one value, array will be your best friend. So what I'm doing now is basically put some numbers in for those values, 4 and 3, and just print out the array. Let's go ahead and run the program and see what happens. Just saving everything. And you can see 4 plus 3 is 7, uh, 4 minus 3 is 1, uh, 4 times 3 is 12, and 4 divided by 3 is 1.33333. So you can see with that one return statement, we were actually able to return four values. Okay, let's take a look at another example that we're going to turn into a function. Previously, we had worked on a passwords example. Let me scroll down to it. And that passwords example, we just ran it once in a PHP statement. But it would be nice to have a function that basically um, runs it whenever you want, need a password. And so you can see I actually had the function commented out. So you're just going to uncomment this and create a function out of it. And then we're going to run that. But we're going to use this for a more advanced example later on. So let's take a look at this example real quick. So in this passwords example, what I've done is just taken all the code from the previous password example and I threw it into a function. And I called that function ran pass, which is going to give me back a random password. So I just enclosed it in the parenthesis, and then at the end I run the ran pass method. Now, notice that I don't have any arguments here. Why not? Because I'm using something, a very important concept I want you to pick up here, and that's the idea of a default argument. Isn't that pretty cool? What I've done is I've actually set arguments in my array and set them equal to a number. And so when you do that, uh, when you run that function, it'll naturally take those numbers and put them in and use them for your default values. Isn't that pretty cool? That is pretty cool. So I can actually just get rid of these numbers right here where I've set all these, and those are actually set in the method. So let's run this. And I'm always making uh, functions with default arguments. It just saves you a lot of time and headache and keeps you from making an error. So if you leave something blank, it'll still run the function. And if you know what it's supposed to run most of the time, then that's good. And if you want to change that, then you pretty much just put whatever values you want in there to change it. Let's run this and see how it goes. And there's my password. Ta-da! That was pretty cool. Now, uh, we're going to use this to do some more advanced things, but let's just do a little bit more work on this function. Uh, I'd left a few things out. Now, one thing I've done, I'm, I'm being a little bit inefficient here. I'm using a for each loop here. Let's use implode to turn this uh, pass array into a string. So what we're going to do now is make our function a little bit more efficient by using the implode method. So I'm going to get rid of this for each method right here. I don't need that anymore. I don't need to, in a sense, concatenate all this to make a string. As a little bit inefficient, I can use the implode method. And I'm not going to be returning the password anymore. Let me just go ahead and just create a new variable. And I'm going to go ahead and just paste all this in to make it a little bit easier. And so what I'm doing now is I'm actually going to take this array that I created right here, this password array, and then I'm going to shuffle it. And once I shuffle it, I'm just going to, in a sense, put it all together as a string and use it as a password. And the way to do that is use the implode method, and the separator is going to be no spaces at all. You just put it all together. So you don't put anything in your little quotes there. Then here's your password array, and it basically all that does is 
And what that does is it turns it all into a string and puts it into the my implode pass, and then you just return my implode pass, and that's all there is in the sense to make that a lot more efficient. Let's uh, go ahead and get out of this little football arrow game and run the program, and here we go. And it returns the password just like previously, but now just done a lot more efficiently. We're going to need that method. So there you have it. I've created a much more efficient uh, method that I can now make reusable with default methods. And if I decide I don't want those default methods, I can actually change them. So let's, let's print out another uh, function instead. So we'll come down here to our call. And what I'm doing actually, I'm, I'm calling it by just calling the function right here. So let's put in some different variables. Let's make them all four, zero, zero, zero. And what that should send out to me is basically just capital letters, four of them as a password. So let's see how, uh, in a sense, versatile this function is. Let's run this. And now I'm just sending out four letters as my, uh, in a sense, my username or my password. And we're actually going to use that in an upcoming program. Let's review what we've learned today. We learned how to return multiple values in the return statement, which will become very useful for us in upcoming programs. For example, you might imagine that you need to return a username and password to the same program, and you'd once again use that array method to uh, return both of those items. Now one thing we want to make a point of, you can actually have multiple return statements in just one function. So if one uh, return is not satisfied, you can go to another. And so once again, the return acts like a break. So once you've satisfied your condition, it in a sense breaks out of the function, it returns whatever you have in the return statement. Once again, only one statement is returned with each return statement. We learned about default values and how powerful that was. So if I just wanted to uh, run this function without anything in it, by using these default values, it knows what to pick and put in the particular uh, function for you. So you'll use those a lot as we move on. And then we actually went along here and made our statement a little bit more efficient by adding in the implode statement. And we'll be adding more efficient functions as we move on in this lesson. And we learned that we actually, once we've actually created those default values, we can actually put any value in there. And we generated a password with four capital letters just by, just by setting everything else to zero. So this is a blast. We are really moving on to some cool stuff. And next time, we're going to move into the wonderful world of object-oriented program. Hey, thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively. I'll see you next time.